Summary of Babylon Revisited by Francis Scott Fitzgerald In Babylon Revisited, Charlie Wales returns to Paris in 1930, a year and a half after the stock market crash and his departure. Charlie begins the story by asking Alex, the bartender at the Ritz, about all the characters who used to frequent the bar. However, it appears that all of Charlie's old acquaintances, with the exception of Duncan Schaefer, have left Paris, no longer as fabulously wealthy as they were during the 1920s. Charlie has also changed. He currently works in Prague and has reduced his alcohol consumption. Charlie gives Alex the address of his brother-in-law and orders him to give it to Duncan Schaefer if he encounters him. Charlie observes the streets of Paris while riding in a taxi to his brother-in-residence. Laws he considers the years he spent in Paris and concludes that he spoilt the city. The days had passed until, all of a sudden, two years had passed, and everything had passed, and then he himself was gone. Anuria, Charlie's nine-year-old daughter, greets him enthusiastically at the door when he arrives at his brother-in-residence. Laws inside, Charlie's brother-in-law Lincoln Peters, sister-in-law Marion Peters, and their two children are waiting for him. Charlie and Marion exchange a frosty greeting. Lincoln asks Charlie about business in Prague, and Charlie says that it's going well, his salary was even larger last year than it had been before the crash and although he is boasting for a specific purpose, he realizes that it concerns Lincoln and stops himself. Charlie reminisces that, for a time, being an American in Paris was like to being a form of royalty, and that it was nice while it lasted. Marion responds positively to Charlie's observation that all the Americans appear to have left Paris. Unconsciously, he admits that he was at the bar earlier that day, prompting Marion to joke that she believes Charlie would have had enough of bars. Charlie explains that he never takes more than one drink in the afternoon. Charlie and Marion have an apparent and instinctive dislike, but Charlie believes Marion's aggression will give him the upper hand in the talk he came to Paris to have. At supper, Charlie ponders whether Anuria resembles him or her mother, Helen, and he expresses his hope that Anuria does not inherit the characteristics that lead him and Helen to tragedy. He focuses on his conviction that character is the eternally valuable factor and that everything else is ephemeral. After dinner, he takes a stroll through Montmartre, an area filled with jazz clubs and bars where he once spent a great deal of time and money. The majority of bars are empty, and others have vanished entirely. What he formerly viewed as Montmartre's effort and cleverness he now views as childish catering to sin and trash. Looking back on his drinking and extravagant spending in this neighborhood, he regrets that he allowed his life to spiral so far out of hand that his child was taken away and his wife escaped to a tomb in Vermont. The following morning, Charlie awakes feeling revitalized, the depression of yesterday having vanished. He brings Anuria to Le Grand Vattel for lunch, the only place he can think of that does not remind him of the opulence of the past. He and Anuria decide to go to the toy store and the vaudeville show, despite Anuria's objection that she doesn't want to go to the toy store because she already has a lot of toys at home and Charlie brought her a doll. During lunch, Charlie encounters Duncan Schaefer and Lorraine Quarles, a lovely blonde with whom he once spent time. Charlie continually denies Duncan and Lorraine's entreaties to join them for dinner, stating that he and Anuria had arrangements to see a vaudeville play and that he will contact them. After their departure, Charlie views his encounter with ghosts from his past as unpleasant. At the vaudeville act, Charlie is concerned that he will not have the opportunity to influence Anuria's development. During intermission, they encounter Duncan and Lorraine again and have a drink together, but Charlie is preoccupied. Anuria announces after the performance that she wants to join Charlie in Prague, which causes his heart to soar. Later that evening, when Charlie arrives at the Peters' home, the atmosphere is strained. He tells them he is very excited to establish a home and wants to return to Prague with Anuria. Marion, barely concealing her disdain for Charlie, inquires how anyone can rely on Charlie to remain sober. Marion brings up the event in which Charlie shut Helen out of their home during a snowstorm, resulting in Helen contracting pneumonia and nearly dying. Charlie begs Marion for her trust, pleading for her to have faith in him. He reminds her that his drinking only lasted for a year and a half, from the time he came in Paris until he crashed and ended up in a sanitarium but that prior to that he had a sterling reputation. He expresses concern that Anuria's upbringing and his hope for a home may be lost. Marion, however, is unable to set aside her disdain for Charlie and accuses him of being responsible for Helen's murder, a tactical error on her part, 
at which point it is evident to everyone in the room that Charlie has assumed control of the situation. Lincoln assures Charlie that he and Marion will not stand in Charlie's way. That night, Charlie has a dream in which Helen expresses her desire for him to marry Honoria. The following morning, Charlie searches for a nanny for Honoria and has lunch with Lincoln Peters, who informs him that he believes Marion resents Charlie due to his money. When Charlie returns to his hotel, he discovers a letter from Lorraine inviting him to meet her, but Charlie is unwilling to do so. Duncan and Lorraine arrive, having received Lincoln's address from Alex, the bartender at the Ritz, while he is at the Peters residence that evening. They ask Charlie to dinner while inebriated, and when he declines, they leave indignantly. Charlie attempts to smooth things over, but Marion is so shocked by the intrusion that she changes her mind about allowing Charlie to return to Prague with Honoria. Charlie leaves the Peters residence and proceeds to the Ritz's bar. Paul, the head bartender, approaches Charlie and informs him that he heard Charlie suffered significant losses in the collision. Charlie claims that he did, but that he lost everything he wanted during the economic collapse. Charlie phones Lincoln, who informs him that he must wait six months before negotiating Anuria's custody with Marion again. Charlie believes that he will send Anuria a large quantity of toys tomorrow, but he becomes enraged when he realizes that he can only send her monetary gifts. He convinces himself that he will return to Paris one day, that the Peters cannot make him pay for his mistakes forever. He is confident that his late wife Helen would not want him to be so lonely. About the author Born in St. Paul, Minnesota, Fitzgerald spent the majority of his boyhood in Buffalo, New York. His parents sent him to school in New Jersey when he was 15 years old, where he met a teacher who pushed him to pursue his aptitude for writing stories. Fitzgerald continued his education at Princeton, where he followed his passion for writing with such passion that his grades worsened, and he eventually dropped out to join the military. Fitzgerald met Zelda Sayer, whom he would later marry, while he was stationed in Alabama before the end of the war. This Side of Paradise, which he released in 1919, was an immediate success. Scott Fitzgerald mostly supported his family by selling short tales like Babylon Revisited to major publications when the couple relocated to Paris in 1924. By 1931, Zelda had manifested symptoms of mental illness. The Fitzgeralds returned to the United States, where Zelda was hospitalized beginning January 1936. From 1936 until his death in 1940, Scott Fitzgerald spent the majority of his time in Hollywood, battling alcoholism and unsuccessfully attempting to write scripts. He passed away from a heart attack. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.